Uh, uh, questions near the, the end of my paper, I, I can answer um, uh, them in terms of what uh, Novik have uh, had to do with it, if anything at all. Uh, but we start with the National Bolshevik Party, we move on to Sergei Kuryokhin, and then to others, uh, whoever they may be. These guys need no introduction, I suppose, yeah? Um, uh, Limonov, a writer, on your right. Dugin, a philosopher, on your left. Um, <clears throat> uh, they are founding fathers of the National Bolshevik Party. This uh, action took place in 1993. Dugin left the party formally in 1998. Uh, Limonov is still head of this party, which is called, uh, which was banned for extremism in 2007, officially, and is now um, exists now as the other Russia of the um, I'm not going to talk uh, uh, a lot about the history. Basically, uh, the party has evolved from, um, uh, let's say, a neo-Nazi, neo-Bolshevik party, a combination of. Uh, uh, <coughs> seemingly <clears throat> uncombinable uh, things uh, into something even more surprising given the background in the early to mid 1990s uh, that is they, they've become quite uh, noticeable on the um, um, in the field of uh, human rights defense and human rights issues uh, now they are actively involved uh, uh, in uh, the Ukrainian crisis, forming uh, the so-called interbrigades and uh, arranging aid for Ukraine, so to speak, obviously for, for the southern and eastern part that is now disputed territory. Um, this is actually part of Dugin's old, Dugin and Limon's old project, which the Kremlin is now implementing. Uh, uh, it's a very interesting thing when a countercultural philosopher like Dugin uh, suddenly becomes uh, um, uh, one of the chief ideologists of the Kremlin, and the Kremlin just does um, what uh, Dugin was hoping would happen 20 and more years ago. Um, just to demonstrate very briefly and hopefully quite convincingly um, that uh, the MPP imagery, which you can see on your right, uh, this is their first uh, party flag, uh, derives partly from the Nazi imagery, which is on your left, uh, but uh, because it's a combination of the most uh, um, uh, left-wing thing with the most right-wing things, as Lemonov himself put it once, uh, in the middle, in the white circle, uh, you, you have uh, 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 Hammer and Sickle instead of the swastika. Um, both Lemonov and Dugin toyed with uh, Nazi ideas. Uh, um, this is a quote from uh, Dugin's early poem, Nishdali Nikem Avatar, an unexpected avatar. Uh, where uh, the world's future is foreseen as uh, Himmler's resurrection, uh, his shiny body will rise from a mossy grave, and his misty eye sockets will follow the eternal dawn. Uh, sort of a utopian vision uh, according to early duty. <clears throat> then their flags underwent a certain evolution under the influence of Vladimir Rinderman, uh, whose Jewish origins. Uh, uh, sort of uh, took him away uh, from uh, um, the neo-Nazi roots of the National Bolshevik Party when Dugin had already left uh, the party and Lemonov was in jail. But when Lemonov came back from jail, uh, he didn't dispute what Linderman uh, uh, did in his absence, which was realigning the party uh, with the liberal democratic discourse uh, the best he could. Um, but some things never changed in the party ideology, and uh, in particular, uh, this notion that's of course been derived from Hitler, one blood, one Reich, and uh, the idea of empire restoration. Uh, here uh, is a comparison of three similar, very similar quotes from the party program of 1994, uh, from a new party program of 2004. The first one was Dugin and uh, Lemonov's creation, the second was Lind Lindemann's creation, and uh, now when uh, the party is called the other Russia, um, uh, a new program in a bid to register the party officially, which failed yet again, um, was made in 2013. Um, and uh, it's essentially about the defense of the interests of the Russian speakers outside of Russia uh, by uh, you know, military force if necessary. We're now witnessing what's happening in Ukraine under this pretext and what happened, uh, for example, uh, in, in South Ossetia in 2008 uh, and so on, in previous stories. So this is part of the most of life. So that's the background as far as the National Bolshevik Party is concerned. Um, my focus would have been, <coughs> naturally, on uh, something that's been understudied with the National Bolshevik Party, <coughs> and this is their music. Um, I was uh, looking through various uh, bands that had been 
uh, associated with the National Bolshevik Party. Uh, over the years, uh, some fell out with, with them, some left the party, but uh, many names on this list, which you can see, um, um, uh, it concerns people who at least at one point in time held a, a formal uh, membership card on their certain number, which you, which you can see uh, if you uh, skim through this list. Grzanska uh, Barona Nyagorletov, now of course uh, a dead man unfortunately, uh, had a membership, uh, had membership card, card number four. Uh, this is the best known, arguably the best known band uh, called uh, Grzanska Barona. Um, the second best known is Pop Mechanika by Sergei Koryokhin, uh, which is our man for today. Um, if uh, you look at uh, this list, you can, which is, is it, it isn't full, but um, it's sort of representative. You can come to a quick conclusion first that the geography uh, here uh, covers uh, uh, not only the Russian Federation but also Latvia, for example, and Israel. So it is quite extensive. And the style, the musical, musical style of these uh, uh, bands, uh, it's not only punk, which is mostly what uh, people tend to think when they think about the NBP related music, um, because Letov was a punk uh, rocker. And many MVP related bands, they uh, tended to imitate uh, letters. They were not very uh, interesting by themselves. Uh, but you could see that there are some bands, for example, Zapishone Barabanshiki, uh, who played very interesting ethnic music. Uh, Ivan Trofimov was behind the project Memory Card Number 6, uh, originally from Rostov and Don. Um, and uh, there was heavy metal and guitar poetry. Heavy metal uh, was uh, is represented by Sergei Troitsky, also known as Pauk, Membership Card Number 14. Alexander Nipomnishi was a bard, a guitar poet, so to speak, uh, now unfortunately died as well. Um, but Pop Mechanica um, is um, something that we will focus uh, upon today in a little bit more detail. Just, just to say that uh, th th there is a variety of musical style and it's very hard to pinpoint, in, uh, pinpoint um, 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 or link a particular uh, rock pop. Um, jazz music style to the National Bolshevik Party in particular, uh, it's eclectic. If you look at the lyrics, yes, there are some uh, um, songs uh, whose lyrics reflect or develop in some way various uh, uh, National Bolshevik ideas, but in terms of musical style, uh, it's all over the place. Uh, and so is Pop Mechanica, which is a combination of uh, various uh, styles and ready-made blocks. But, uh, I'm going to <coughs> say a few words about it uh, very soon. But first, let's talk about Sergei Kuryohin. Uh, he was the Pop Mechanica um, creator, although some people say that uh, uh, Timur Norikov uh, uh, inspired him to do that. Uh, there are basically two schools of thought. Th those who stand closer to Kuryohin, they say, no, Kuryohin uh, was the main person there, and uh, Novikov and uh, Sergei Bugayev Africa only helped, helped him, him uh, regularly to uh, contribute to the Pop Mechanica shows. Uh, others say uh, that. Uh, um, uh, Novikov's ideas were actually um, materialized by, by Kuryohin. <clears throat> I take no sides here. Um, although my main source on Kuryohin is a close personal friend, uh, Alexander Khan, who is now a, a BBC Russian service correspondent. Uh, he claims that uh, uh, Kuryohin <coughs> held uh, the ultimate respons responsibility for um, all that pretty much uh, happened on stage during the pop mechanical performance. Kurohin was a rock and jazz musician, actor and political activist, to those who haven't really come across him yet. Uh, in the early 1970s, he studied at the Leningrad Institute of Culture, but didn't graduate. Uh, he made at first his living as an accompanist and choir master, played in various rock and jazz bands, including uh, Ganelin's trio and the Kari, of course. Uh, later became interested in free jazz, and in 1981 released his first jazz, al jazz album, which was abroad. The album is called Ways of Freedom on the Leo Records, which is a uh, Emigre label by Leo Fagan. It was also a BBC Russian service uh, contributor, uh, <coughs> staff member for, for years. So that's the <coughs> uh, cover of um, Khan's recent book on Kuryohin. It uh, was published in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Khan says that there are two pri primary influences on Kuryohin. One uh, was provided by critic <coughs> Ifin Barban, who uh, published this uh, very interesting article. Uh, will just still exist in the year 2000. Uh, so uh, so uh, by the end of the century, everything that we have now in sort of academic musical writing and in, and in jazz uh, will merge into um, uh, musical, 
music and aesthetic unity. Um, the other influence is musician Vladimir Chekasin, with whom Kurohin played on stage as well. Uh, he, he sort of uh, opened for Kurohin a new form, according to Kant, uh, a new form of uh, uh, scenic musical, um, stage musical action, uh, uh, synthesis of uh, jazz rock theatre, uh, which was mixed together uh, uh, with irony and parody and what uh, Kant calls stop. Uh, in other words, a postmodern attitude to life and art, which uh, had only been emerging at that time. Um, the BBC documentary Comrades of the Jazz, uh, which came out in 19, uh, uh, 1985 and was specifically devoted to uh, Kurokin, has already been mentioned in this room several times. Um, um, so I'm going to uh, talk a, a lot about that. Uh, but um, <clears throat> What's important to understand is that uh, Kudokin's ideas about uh, this merger of various forms of art on stage <coughs> and um, the great synthesis of, of it all uh, goes, line, uh, uh, goes in line directly with uh, uh, the National Democratic Party's drive to synthesize various quite opposite forms of political activity and ideology. And this is, uh, I think, where um, <coughs> uh, uh, Kudokin joins the, the party not only for provocation's sake, as uh, one of the explanations uh, has it, uh, but also with an open heart and open mind, and uh, quite uh, sincerely, um, and uh, potentially with great results. The problem is that uh, Kurokin joined this party in 1995. Uh, well, he wasn't really an official uh, card carrier. A card was issued for him. A card had number four, 418. I'll explain in a minute. Where this number comes from, it doesn't mean that at the, at the time in the party there were four, 417 members and he was the uh, 418th. It, it means something different. Uh, the party probably had much fewer members at, at that stage in 1995. But in 1996 he died of heart cancer, and uh, they, this is where the story uh, of uh, <coughs> the National Bolshevik Party member, uh, would be member, uh, and, uh, ends. Uh, apparently the card was issued when he was already in. Hospital nearly on a deathbed, and, and it had never been handed in. Uh, what, this is what he said himself in an interview to uh, National Bolshevik, also the journalist Dmitry Shmania, in 1995. And Bepe, at absolutely no way, theology, religion, culture, at a stremlenie prava bit levami, a levach pravami, gruba gavaria, v ramkach national bolshevismo, and it's a giant of second duality. Yes, it's an, an absolute new, completely new ideology, religion, and culture. Um, uh, the attempt of uh, the right wing to become left wing, the left wing to become uh, right wing, uh, uh, roughly speaking, uh, within the national Bolshevism, um, uh, there is no room for any kind of dualism. Um, um, okay, so um, um, now let's talk about pop mechanics uh, as um, uh, Kurokin's arguably chief uh, artistic achievement on stage. Um, he explained to the BBC documentary Comrades uh, how it all uh, came together. In the musical media, there is a huge number of friends who play with different kinds of And we played with a concert, in which every person played with a minute of that music, which they always play with. And then I liked it so much that I started to invite all my friends to play with me. So, uh, essentially a concert of friends that he put together, uh, everybody does his or her own thing, and, and then uh, the success was such that, that they started to, uh, assembling them regularly. Not necessarily the same people, sometimes different people, um, depending on <coughs> the situation, um, but uh, it was all, all, always uh, um, <coughs> um, something that could be called kapusnik to um, uh, quote again what Birgit was saying on another occasion, but this is the culture of kapusnik, uh, essentially, if you, if you, uh, if you wish. Uh, but uh, it's a very ambitious kapusnik at the same time, because uh, Kurohin uh, in his interview to the Cadence magazine in the United States uh, in 1983, said uh, that he wanted metaphysics of total unity. He uh, wanted to uh, approach uh, or imitate uh, mystery, mysteria in Russian, yeah? The Abajayo mystery, the genre of uh, medieval mystery, if you like. Abajayo sam ducha to vajernyo rituala. I adore the very spirit of its ancient ritual. Um, Kant himself distances from his friend and says quite cautiously that what was uh, on stage uh, when Bok Mechanik was performing, it uh, could, could be called Karavalna, sorry, Karnavalna Paradoxalna yeah? um, uh, Carnival uh, Paradoxical uh, Madness, Insanity. Um, 
Kobe Hanukkah never became uh, something permanent, uh, first of all because uh, production didn't want, uh, want it to. Um, uh, it was a free structure model uh, which was filled in every time with uh, what he thought would, would be uh, appropriate depending on the situation, on who was available, uh, how much money was available and so on and so forth. Um, on the specific ideas uh, that he had at the time, because Kopi Hanukkah tended to be thematic. There would be one general theme into which uh, invited guests would, would fit. Um, and then next time it would be a different performance, perhaps with the, uh, somebody who would provide um, you know, the basic structure and with new additions every time on a new uh, or under a new thematic angle. Um, um, this is what uh, Kahn has to say about uh, pop mechanics. Kurochin играл с целыми общекультурными пластами. Каждый кирпичик в здании, каждая стеклочка в калейдоскопе популярной механики призваны были служить символом или знаком определенной эпохи, определенного исторического, культурного, политического смысла. Сердце тебе не хочется покоя. Тарбовый сон увезу тебя в тундру. Это новый сон о нас во дворе. Это новый сон в сердце любого советского человека. Пробуждали целый сон ассоциаций. А под грохот индустриальной секции, в сопровождении садомазохистского шоу или предыдущего по сцене стада гусей, рождался очень сложный комплекс щемящей тоски, безудержного веселья, тонкого юмора, грустной иронии, да и просто невероятного восторга от сумевшего все это придумать ума и сумевшей все это осуществить энергией. So, in other words, uh, a bit of everything, a media that would combine popular Soviet songs with uh, uh, Say the Mazo show, uh, with uh, uh, geese on stage, uh, uh, and that would uh, evoke uh, various uh, complex feelings in the audience. But the point is that there was never a dull moment, and the, the audience uh, was fascinated by um, all of it and wanted more. Sometimes less. <clears throat> In any case, there could be there could be three features uh, um, uh, singled out as common to all pop mechanica performances, uh, insofar as they could be restored and uh, analyzed again. Because uh, uh, many of them um, have just disappeared; they haven't really been properly documented. Uh, there are some performances uh, on YouTube if you key in. Uh, pop Mechanica, Popular Mechanica, you will see, for example, the performance in Helsinki. Uh, you will see Pop Mechanica number 418 that I'm going to analyze a little bit uh, more today. Um, uh, but uh, there, were, there were many more of them, and it uh, uh, has to be studied properly you know, as, a, as an event uh, in its own right. But in any case, there are three common features there. Создание аргеостической картины безумия, в которой все возможное каждый лыка в строку. Feature number one, a creation of an orgiastic picture of madness, in which everything is possible and everything works to the same grand idea, towards the same grand idea. Um, feature number two, слом насилия, разрушение структурное или эмоциональное, или снижение сбоя пафоса, kind of break, uh, sometimes violent, destructive, uh, either a structural one or an emotional one, or uh, <clears throat> a basis and going sort of down from uh, the uh, high emotional feelings. And feature number three, Nagramardini Slayov, I already mentioned that, Rock Grupa, Jasmine, Classic Orchestra, Folkloristi, Cirkachi, Bayon Orchestra, Industriale Sexe, this is where Lovica um, and Africa were particularly um, prominent. Некоторые балерины, животные, много многое другое неизбежно порождало элемент случайности и непредсказуемости. To put it in a nutshell, uh, all these different styles, performers, uh, genres on stage at the same time under a kind of broad uh, banner that unites them all, um, uh, inevitably uh, produced an element of uh, um, unpredictability. Um, <coughs> uh, reviews. There were a few, but uh, quite eloquent. Uh, one of them, for example, says, I quote, uh, quote a, <coughs> a memorial article by Sergei Letov, uh, the older brother of uh, Yegor Letov of Grozdanska uh, um, Barona uh, and a long term associate uh, of uh, Kuryohin, who uh, was a jazz musician himself, uh, Sergei Letov, um, and took part in many concerts that uh, Kuryohin. Organized and he quotes from a, from a review in the song school. Вообще одной поп механике принимали участие 463 человека и один кас. In this pop uh, this particular pop mechanic, 463 uh, people took uh, took place and one good. And Kazola obviously is a derogatory term uh, as well um, uh, in, in the Russian language, and you may surmise that it was addressed to Kuryokin himself. He was the Kazola. Um, but this is just a conjecture. Um, 
um, Kuryokhin <laughs> failed in his bid abroad. Um, he, he really thought when he was not a great musician in the Soviet Union that he could make a bid uh, in the West because uh, his free jazz style, largely for polit political reasons, primarily for, for political reasons, but also uh, for, uh, for the musical value that it had, because he was an incredibly talented musician, um, uh, very, uh, a virtuoso jazz pianist, uh, and also a talented composer. Um, but it became uh, sort of uh, known in the West uh, through this free jazz margin, um, which was semi suppressed in the Soviet Union, that, that, that's helped Kurekin uh, uh, with his initial fame and uh, his uh, initial exposure to uh, the Western musical world, especially the jazz world in the first place. But when he started taking pop mechanica there, uh, that was a different story altogether. Uh, people just uh, didn't understand in the West what, what it was about. I mean, in, in uh, late Soviet, post Soviet Russia, they didn't have much of a clue either, but uh, they just got excited. In, uh, in the West, uh, people, the public, tend to become uh, incensed and, uh, um, uh, as it says here, Tupaumne, Nemetsky, Zelone, Brosely, Zashishat, Kazla. So when those are able to go to the stage, uh, obtuse German uh, members of the Green Party uh, started defending the uh, animal rights of the, of the goat that was there on the stage and so on and so forth. So um, what um, um, uh, also contributed to Kurokin's embrace of the National Bolshevik doctrine, uh, which is fiercely anti-Western, is that he was disappointed ultimately when he started traveling to the West uh, with the reception of his ideas in the West. And uh, that's uh, um, uh, turned him into a Russian nationalist, which he himself says in, in some interviews uh, directly. So here we are, uh, Kurokin and the NPP, uh, Dugin on your uh, left, uh, Kurokin on your right. Um, just uh, very quickly to list various things that uh, I think Put together Kurekin and the MVP. This is uh, his uh, Kurekin's uh, synthetic improvisational provocational approach to art. Uh, he was marginal to the establishment. Um, he early understood that Russia couldn't be westernized. <coughs> um, um, and the personal fascination with Dukin, whom he met uh, around about 1995, and uh, uh, became uh, so impressed that he wanted actually to help Dukin to get elected into the Duma. Um, not from Moscow, Dugin is a Moscovite. Uh, he brought Dugin to St. Petersburg for campaigning. Um, Kurochin uh, hired a, a, a place for him, uh, and uh, his party comrades, the sort of St. Petersburg project, branch of the National Bolshevik Party, um, uh, where, where the campaign could be uh, developed from. He took him on television. Uh, his pop mechanica number 418 was um, a vehicle for, for Dugin, um, and um, an interesting. Um, sort of attempt uh, to uh, turn this uh, cultural event into, into a fun fundraiser for, for Dugin and also to recruit uh, Dugin's um, uh, future uh, voters uh, uh, through this uh, particular performance of Pope Heineke number 418. And what, um, what they had there in September 1995 uh, in the Lens of Hans of Culture could be seen just, just about 30 minutes of it. The show lasted uh, for about 90 minutes. Uh, what can be found on, on YouTube is fragments of the show. It's not a continuous filming, but uh, yeah. a bit of here, a bit there, uh, next, next, next. So, so you can't really make much sense of it of what was going on there. Um, but uh, uh, you can look it up if you're interested. Um, uh, here's a description, uh, a verbal description. Scena была усеяна пылающими крестами с распятыми каскадерами. Крутилось гигантское колесо, внутри которого тонно танцевала вавилонская блудница или бегал, одетый в куклу склановский костюм палач. Взрывались петарды, под ногами ползали карлики и бедуины, а пенсионерки с фильма пели патриотические песни. Какой-то черт из табакерки пытался пристроиться с зале к обедам в костюме костюм Ихтиандра четырехрукный капитан, капитан из Курякин's nickname, с намерениями явно неокального сексуального характера, and so on so forth. Most importantly, Dugin, for the accompaniment of Tibetan ritual instruments, pronounced in Russian and French languages some magic curses. Alimonov with Skuryokin, Alimonov was also there. Pele and Nissan, we need only one victory at Punjab. So, so Dugin, this bit is uh, too important to, to leave it uh, in Russian only. Uh, for those in the room who are probably uh, not that familiar with Russian, Dugin uh, uh, was uh, um, um, pronouncing uh, some magical incantation, incantations. Uh, in, in Russian and French, and Limonov and Kuryokin 
uh, sign a song uh, in which the refrain says uh, will need uh, uh, victory. So uh, the, the Babylonian core, um, the incantation, incantations, the whole idea of this uh, number, 418, they come from Alistair Crowley, uh, a British magician and uh, author, um, who founded a new religion after a, a, a spiritual revelation in, in Egypt in 1904, which is based on ancient, uh, ancient uh, Egyptian beliefs. Um, he has, uh, uh, he has uh, delineated, uh, delineated three principal eons or um, uh, periods of history uh, linked with Isis, uh, which is matriarchal, so prehistory of Osiris, a classical and medieval uh, patriarchal period, and Horus, uh, a child vault, uh, which is a period of self realization, and he saw himself um, as, a, as a kind of prophet of this Horus uh, era. And uh, he created this uh, uh, cinema uh, religion and pantheon that includes the goddess of pleasure, uh, Babylon, a virgin whore, right? which we see uh, in the flesh uh, during the performance of Hanukkah, number 418. Um, uh, so, uh, in fact, uh, these magical uh, incantations that uh, Judith recites, uh, from the, they come from uh, a book by Alistair Crowley called uh, Aradita. Um, I suspect that the French comes uh, first because they, uh, because Dugan had access to the French version of this book, not to the English version uh, of this book, and then he tried to translate um, uh, these incantations into Russian from the French, uh, which explains various discrepancies between this uh, Russian text that Dugan pronounces um, on stage during the Pop Mechanica 419 and the uh, English original of the Crowley book that I'm working with. So, um, um, what uh, they are going to uh, um, they were going to do during the stage performance was to recruit to recruit um, um, uh, voters through this uh, um, magical ritual uh, ritual of initiation, and uh, it didn't succeed. Of course, so they failed miserably. Um, <clears throat> um, um, Limonov has this to say uh, in um, a feature that's devoted to Kurokin uh, in. Um, uh, his book uh, of, <laughs> <laughs> his book of memoirs called Knigge uh, This is the first uh, version of Knigge Nörte. There's a second one that came out later. Uh, it's different from the first. But this is Dugin and Koryokina. I didn't believe in that such actions would be used for us. I didn't believe that we, we would get voters uh, this way. I didn't believe that the audience of this concert would be in the party. I didn't even believe that they would join the party after, uh, after this concert. I thought that this would be thrown into the ocean. Like throwing stones into the ocean, um, you know, pissing against the wind or something. Yeah. Uh, the winner was a very good one. He won a miserable one. He won only 1500 votes uh, uh, that he uh, managed, to, uh, managed to uh, gain in the 1995 Duma election as a result. So that's, that's a very brief interpretation of a particular uh, action, uh, live action, Popo Hankin of 119, that's been. Uh, performed uh, by uh, organized and performed by uh, Kurokin and his associates uh, with uh, the MVP agenda in mind. And this is where I'm going to stop, really. And the, if you have any questions about Novikov's involvement in this, uh, uh, Katya Andreeva, uh, she's already uh, saved me from actually reciting uh, these polemics that uh, took place in, in the uh, St. Petersburg Press as a result of uh, Novikov's. Uh, being present at the joint press conference of the MVP with Kuryokin uh, in the, in the uh, Lenin uh, Rock Club on uh, the Rudenstein Street uh, uh, with Kuryokin, um, uh, Limonov, Dugin, and Novikov uh, around the same table giving the same press conference um, uh, on this occasion. But uh, I could elaborate on that if, if you like. Uh, I have to stop here. Thank you very much for your attention and for your patience. <laughs> Oh. I'm very curious about the expression "nagromoshdenia slayov," because that links it to some extent with a hot stove and certainly with a Novikov. But those were not layers. We're talking about "nagromoshdenia" in the Russian context, or явлений, даже не жанров. I would say that it means blocks rather than. Yes, I mean, slay I mean, slay is, is a loaded word in Russian, of course, but maybe it's not partic particularly. Uh, well, slay was meant to think of either. Class, right, or aesthetically, right, in film it's a superimposition, right, 
uh, and in art, maybe something that really is layered. And I just don't understand how it fits in at all. It doesn't. Okay. It's a mystery, all right. it's a mystery of art. It's sad. Uh, <laughs> yes. We, we, have, we, have to, we have to watch uh, these pop mechanicals to, uh, to mm -hmm. you know, um, is there, any sense of, is there any sense of layering at all in the groups of I would say building blocks one after another, uh, uh -huh. but uh, yes, supposedly yes. there is a grand idea for every show and uh, um, the initiated reader, the, the, part of the problem is that uh, if you're initiated then it speaks to you more, it speaks to your volumes, but uh, in the end it's supposed to come together in a big wave and in that sense it could be Slyhe sort of layers that mm -hmm. uh, uh, together, you know, the, the upshot is bigger than the sum of the parts, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Just one short question. Yeah, I have a piece of the Pop Mechanica performance in Stockholm from '88. So if you, if it's 20 minutes, and it was given by someone, and he allowed me to pass it on to people who are interested. Fantastic. The, the more the better. I'll be grateful. We'll okay. speak after the show. Yeah. And one could you please uh, open your first slide, uh, I don't remember, with the banners? With the banners? Yeah. What did the patient with me? Hmm? Uh, I ask him because it's very important to know that uh, the author of the banner is uh, uh, Sid Wishes, uh -huh. founder of Sex Pistols. Right. And uh, uh, it was first appeared uh, in his uh, movie uh, To Kill uh, Bambi. As I remember, maybe I mistake, but huh. as for me, it's in uh, yeah. Kill Bandit yeah. movie. And author of the banner is uh, Sid Vicious. It's Sex Pistols punk culture. Mm. They just captured, and we feel they, they just captured this uh, act. But uh, I think that it's very important to, in understanding of the processes uh, of communication of mm. uh, Russian politicians mm. and, uh, and punk culture. That's right. Uh, Limonov, of course, was steeped into punk culture since mm -hmm. his uh, New York days, yes. yeah? when he was a personal friend of the B-52s. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just stop there. But, uh, um, this is new information to me. I didn't realize where really? it comes from. And uh, uh, I haven't really come across the information who this should, should be attributed to. But there's just yet another building block. Uh, <laughs> uh, like a player, player, and another uh, uh, sorry to, uh, to come too much attention. New, new Ah, uh, <laughs> 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 Now for the uh, last presentation. <laughs>